Shall we pray? Dear God, we're so thankful for your faithfulness in us, and we pray that we will be faithful to you. Thank you for a new year when we can renew our commitment to you, our love to you, and our service to you. Bless us in this Sabbath day. Bless our families who cannot be with us, those in the hospital, those who are hurting. Comfort them, God, and may we be ready to go home with you when you come soon to pick us up. In Jesus' name, amen. Be seated, please. Good morning, and welcome to the University Church Sabbath School. We're glad you're here. We welcome you here in the sanctuary, those of you who are watching on television or on the computer or listening by podcast. We're so glad you are joining us as well. I am Melanie Wichenich Job, and this morning I'm filling in for Dr. Renata Krauss, who planned this program. And she works in the School of Public Health, and what better way to start our new year than to focus on health and the way that we live. We all know about New Year's resolutions, right? In one year and out the other. But this year will be different for all of us, right? We'll all get the exercise we need, we'll get the rest we need. Uh, we will have a more healthy lifestyle. Our special feature today is entitled, Preserving Our Lifestyle Heritage. Mrs. White encouraged the church many years ago to take a stand for the eight principles of health. Remember those from long ago. Now the acronym New Start helps us to remember them, and I want to review them with you this morning. Okay, think of the word New Start. Okay, N E W S T A R T. Okay, the eight principles. Many of you learned them as children and throughout your profession, those of you in the healthcare profession. N stands for what? Nutrition. E is exercise. Good. W? Water. S, sunshine, good. T, temperance. A, fresh air. R, rest. And T, trust in God. Very good. What good memories we have. So this morning, the preventive care program at Loma Linda University's School of Public Health will be featured. And their focus is on these health principles. And their program, one of the goals of the program is to help preserve our Adventist lifestyle. Students are trained in individual and community lifestyle counseling and assessment. This doctorate in health science began actually in 1972 and was later changed to the doctorate in preventive care in 1991. Currently, Dr. Serena Tonstead, an MD, PhD, is the director of the program. And she, along with her colleague, Dr. Hildemar Dos Santos, an associate professor in the department, and Claudio Hapas, who is a doctoral student in the program, will present our special feature. Doctoral student Salim Serrano was our chorister, and he will continue sharing his musical talents with us with two more selections, composed by Steve Green. Instead of the mission, which is in our program, he will be singing Touch Your People Once Again, and then during the offertory, find us faithful. Our organist this morning is Grace Chung, and our own pastor and scholar in residence, Dr. Bernard Taylor, will present our lesson study, The Prophetic Gift. Paul writes, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. This morning as we worship, we pray that God will be with us and bless us today and help us in all of us as our challenge to live a healthy lifestyle, a lifestyle that will have our bodies be a temple where God will dwell. So many big but empty words So we come before your face 
asking for your grace bring your people into a state of kingdom's life restore your school again touch preventive care once again by your precious holy hand we pray may your kingdom shine upon the earth through a living glorious school not for temporary deeds but to restore authority and power let a mighty rushing your people once again Lord we see your tired servants and the broken wounded soldiers oh how much we need your precious healing hand we need the power of the cross as the only source for us when we stand up Facing the final battle cry, restore your school again. Touch preventive care once again. By your precious holy hand we pray, may your kingdom shine upon the earth through a living glorious moon. Not for temporary deeds, but to restore authority and power. Let a mighty rushing wind blow in. Touch your people once again. your people once again. May that blow wind of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. We are here to introduce you to the preventive care doctoral program. The Blue Zones world areas with high longevity rates are losing their longevity lifestyle, including our new start in Loma Linda. That is where the preventive care program fits, to preserve our lifestyle heritage. And here you see a picture of the preventive care committee. What is preventive care? It is an advanced or doctoral level training in lifestyle assessment and treatment. The MPH in lifestyle medicine is another program that we offer for health professionals who want to get more experience in lifestyle promotion. We also promote health seminars, health fairs and lectures locally and internationally in churches and in the community. And Claudio, one of our students, will present a report on his trip to Mozambique later on. Our students have to be involved in research and defend a dissertation. Laurie, one of our students, is happy here after her proposal was approved by the Preventive Care Committee. The program started in 1972 with Dr. Mervyn Hardinger that many of you might know here. The name of the program in that time was Doctor of Health Sciences. In 1991, the program name was changed with Dr. Glenn Blix, that many of you might remember here. He was a member of this church. Many graduates of our program are very well known. 
like Dr. Hans Diel, that is a member of this church from the SHIP program, and Dr. Don Hall from WellSource Corporation, and Dr. Ernie Medina, that is from Beaver Medical Clinic and Drazen Center Exertainment Zone. He is an expert on exercise with video games. And finally, Dr. Olivia Moses, who is in charge of the wellness program at Loma Linda University. Today, we are offering in the fellowship hall with our students a free stress assessment. Please come to the fellowship hall this morning and have your stress assessed. If you have stress, I have a lot of stress now, I should be assessed. <laughs> and finally, we are introducing you to the Drazen Center Wellness Clinic that we are just starting this year. We offer lifestyle counseling, lifestyle assessment, and we have a unique machine, the InBody 520, that can measure body fat percentage, lean body mass, body water content, BMI, and basal metabolic rate. Please feel free to come to the fellowship hall Feel free to share with us, to contact us, to know more about our services that are here to prevent diseases, to somehow uh, help us to continue with our new start lifestyle. Now I pass the time to our director, Dr. Serena Tonstad. Good morning, church members. It's a pleasure to meet you and have your attention for a few minutes. Our program trains doctors of health rather than doctors of disease. And our graduates are specialists in the prevention of disease, but also in contributing to reversing certain diseases. The graduates are expert health coaches and deal with the physical, mental, and spiritual health needs of individuals. And you know the principles already. They're trained to promote good nutrition, physical activity, and mental and spiritual rest and balance. Are they living examples of these principles? Well, we try to be, just as you do. Now, modern medicine has made enormous progress in regard to preventing disease. The father of modern medicine, William Osler, said many years ago that arteriosclerosis results from the bad use of good vessels. This has proven to be the case. Just this week, I found that medical students here had learned very well that endothelial dysfunction, the endothelium is the inner lining of blood vessels, and dysfunction of the endothelium results from a poor lifestyle, from risk factors, from hypertension, from smoking, from high lipid levels like cholesterol, especially the bad cholesterol. Today we know that atherosclerosis can be reversed with the combination, and generally, of medications and lifestyle. And this illustration shows you how atherosclerosis progresses with the accumulation of fat beneath the beautiful endothelium that lines the vessels. And with diet change and medication, this can be reversed, though the same plaque is Seen. You see the thickness of the wall is about the same. However, the lipids have left the arterial wall and instead there is a thick protective layer showing the natural ability of the body to heal itself. This is a result of lifestyle change in part. Now there are all kinds of new items in the newspaper. One thing is healthy one day, another day it's not. Some of you may have taken medications that are later on proven to perhaps not be as healthy as we thought. 
Another day you may hear that coffee is very healthy, while another substance may not be. How do you interpret all these findings? Well, certainly we would like to be able to interpret them. And one of the main principles is that whatever you read in the newspaper should be in harmony with the biology of the body. And if it's not, be skeptical. It's also very helpful when there's been a randomized controlled clinical trial, which we call an RCT, to show whether removing a factor or instituting a factor causes less or more disease. Well, if you have questions about this, be sure to give us a call. We may be able to give you some ideas. One of the threats to modern health is abdominal obesity. And one of the discoveries today is that fat cells in the abdomen produce a number of harmful substances to blood vessels. And these harmful substances are listed up there. Another discovery is that abdominal obesity is associated with insulin resistance. And what does that mean? Well, one of the me things this means is that the liver produces both fat and sugar at the same time, something that is really not supposed to happen, leading to diabetes. So, there's a number of activities in preventive care. They're listed here as the most important being smoking cessation, lowering blood pressure, treating metabolic syndrome, diabetes and abdominal obesity, and lowering LDL cholesterol. And some of the illustrations are supposed to tell you that having the mind along, mental processes are also part of these treatments. Finally, we aim to avoid generalities and moralisms, and rather, in modern prevention programs, follow an old Chinese proverb which says, tell them and they will see, show them and they will know, finally, involve them and they will understand. Thank you for your attention. Good morning. As a preventive care student, I want to share uh, a hobby of mine, which is mission trips. Uh, last, this past summer, found.